Good afternoon. Welcome to the Parenting Versus Podcast. Podcast. Um, yeah, so... Oh. <laughs> There's a wandering baby. A There's, rogue baby. Yeah, wandering baby. They hear that music and they just know it's... It's like... It's time. They've been triggered to destroy us. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. So, yeah, we've moved our house around, like, basically all of it. Yeah. We're restless individuals, Mm -hmm. and we need change. I've always been like that. Same here. Like, restless, yes, but uh, I just like to move stuff around. So Okay. um, I feel like I cannot get warm. I am freezing. Our house is... Is um, drafty. Very yeah, drafty and echoey. We have tile everywhere, so it's mm-hmm. like it's like crazy. Um, yeah. So uh, okay, <laughs> I just saw this headline on our Google Cast TV. Natalie Portman at thirteen experienced sexual terrorism. CNN. Okay. Yeah. Just in case anyone. I don't know what that is. That. Do you? Sexual terrorism. Yeah. I would say I know what sexual harassment is. Maybe maybe she's just referencing it as sexual terrorism. I don't know. Now I'm going to have uh, to look it up. Yeah. All right. Well, um, 30 seconds in, I'm going to take our little daughter back to the room where Dory is playing. <laughs> hi, Juju. Can you say hi? She's looking at the phone like... Whatever. She's, yeah, she's okay. a... You want me to pause it or... No, or, it's all right. right. It's okay. So I'm actually kind of like nerding out right now. I'm a little excited. Um, I did a 23andMe genetic test thing for um, Christmas and I sent it in the day after Christmas and I finally, like I checked it and I don't have the results yet, but it's down to like the last little notch on the timeline, which says it's almost ready. So I'm like, ooh, it's almost ready. And I'm like... <laughs> really excited so I'm hoping like this week I'll get my results I'm sorry you guys I just woke up from a nap and I feel like my brain is moving very slowly um I had Lorenzo make coffee because I'm like I can't I can't function I don't know I've been we've both been kind of sick this last week with different things and I feel like I'm finally snapping out of it but I'm just like tired I'm like non-stop tired And of course, like everyone I know is like, are you pregnant? And I'm like, no, dear God, no, 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 no. (laughs) Keep your pregnancy words away from me. Yeah. Were you talking about genetics just now? Yeah. So it's almost done. Yeah. So my, my test, I'll show you like, this is, this is exciting. You guys can't see it, but it goes down to like, has this little timeline where it first tells you Hmm. that you're registered. Mine didn't do that for me. Then your kid is in transit. That's because you're not, you're not (laughs) as special as I am. (laughs) Then it says receiving and quality inspection. I was going to say something, but it was inappropriate, so. Yeah. <laughs> then it goes to DNA extraction. That was finished on the 15th. Then DNA analysis. Then quality review. That was on the 19th. Then the initial raw data processing was also on the 19th. And mm-hmm. right now, it's in the last phase, which is computation and report generation. Hmm. So it should be done very, very soon. They have taken your spit out of the bottle and... They are now putting it into a machine somewhere. They're basically going to tell me what shade of vanilla I am. <laughs> like, that's kind of it. Like My biggest surprise was that I was a shade of vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> we thought you were caramel all along. Yeah, well, I guess I still am caramel, but... Yeah. Um, car- caramel? <laughs> I don't know. Caramel? Caramel. I, I, don't, I say caramel, but I'm sure some people mm. say it like a bunch of weirdos, and they say caramel. I think... A, caramel! <laughs> I think caramel is like a Midwest... I think thing. caramel sounds stupid. Hey, well, judgment. Just, this is a judgment-free zone. All right, so... This is my house. Yes. If I'm going to judge people, it's going to be here. In our echo, echoey house. Judgment, 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 judgment. <laughs> um, oh, that just reminded me, to, reminded me of that term echo chamber. Uh-huh. That's... And I was thinking about that. Please don't say we're doing this at my school right now. No. What? In my class. For science. Why would we be talking about an echo chamber? I guess... I don't know, because you're always like, in, in my classes right now, we're talking about molecules. <laughs> we are, actually. We're talking about photosynthesis. No. Somebody kill me. <laughs> cellular kill respiration. Me, kill me, kill me, kill me. What are the three major steps of cellular respiration? Glycolysis, Krebs cycle, which can be sometimes called the citric acid cycle. And then finally, the electron transport chain, which is a thing of beauty. 
Um, Enjoy forever. Mm-hmm. Mm. But um, yeah, I wonder if uh, I wonder if acid boogers are genetic. Acid boogers. Yes. What are you talking about? Well, I've like heard right of now, acid rain, but I've never <laughs> heard of acid boogers. So I don't get sick that often. Well, I think I'm getting sick more. I guess probably because I'm hanging out with a bunch of like dirty, grubby teenagers. Yeah. Um, and uh, I got a cold, right? Mm-hmm. Which I believe turned into a. Uh, um, a uh, sinus infection. I self-diagnosed because you know I don't have insurance or anything. I self-diagnosed <laughs> because I don't have. Insurance. Thank you, Mayo Clinic, via well, you don't Google have Voice. Insurance, you are your own doctor. I I asked Google Home. I was like, Hey, Google Home, what are the symptoms of a sinus infection? And she's like, This, 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 and this. I was like, Okay. Oh. <laughs> she's gonna tell you right now. She heard me. Well, yeah. again, um, so. I was like, okay, I have all of those things. I have all of those things. I am um, diseased. But one of the things, one of the things that I have was, like, it feels like it's hot lava coming, except not hot, coming out of my nose. It's just like slowly just seeping out and like that is so burning all of the skin around my face. Um, it's terrible. I don't really have you ever like, had that? No. You've never had that? It's I have like never. acid acid boogers. They're like no. It feels like there's acid like acid just coming out of your nose and just burning you i what are you looking up are you changing the subject already i'm just looking up because i wanted to mention this later you have you don't care about what i should say i know i do care i just how many ways can you really describe acid booger i'm just saying that's that's what it is i think people get it and it's it's awful you know um people understand the concept of acid but i'm just saying it's a good thing we have mexican uh what do you call them? Pills in our fridge. That sounds. <laughs> we have antibiotics from <laughs> from south Mexico. Of the border. Yeah, my mom's my mom's so funny. It was like last year, this time I had a cold and a sinus infection. She's like, she's like, oh, don't worry, I have some uh, moxicillin. I was like, mom, I'm not supposed to have your medication. She's like, oh, don't worry, it's from Juarez. And I was like, oh. okay. And Thanks. those are the joys of living in Albuquerque. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so you don't. Fast. I mean, it's good. Though. I'm taking those puppies. I don't care. Hmm. I mean, I don't have insurance, so. Did I already say that? You did. Because you're a doctor? Mm-hmm. No, I am not a doctor. Well, you know, when you when you don't have insurance, you become a PhD of yourself. You have your PhD mm-hmm. in, in selfology. Yeah. You self-diagnose. I can't yep. talk. I'm like having a hard time with mm-hmm. words. Yep. But I feel a lot better today. Like I woke up this morning, I felt pretty crummy. We did drive to Berlin for fun. Yeah. That was interesting. Was it? Did it you? was interesting. I I enjoyed it. Like we're in, we're in tell. Albuquerque all the time. You looked really pissed. I was not pissed. I was just I okay. was in the midst of a sinus infection. You you just kind of looked like I'm not sure why we're here, but I'm gonna keep on driving. No, I I was enjoying it's it's a change of scenery. Like Belen is Belen, right? Oh, and um, well, sorry. Pro tip. Mm-hmm. This is a parenting tip. I'm going to throw it out there. Okay. Don't tell your kids you're going on an adventure if you're just going to drive to Bolin. Because the it was an adventure to me. Because the entire time to you. Mm-hmm. But the entire time they were like, where are we going? Why are we going there? How come we're going there? Our are kids, we going to stop? <laughs> our kids are not, uh, what's their name? Friend dresser? <laughs> <laughs> our, that's true. Our, our kids are Barbara Streisand in the back that's, seat. That's very true. Barbara <laughs> No, um, that's true. But um, our kids were like, like Luke was just like, where are we going? How come we're going there? Why are we going there? Are we going to stop? What are we going to eat? Can we go to that park? What are we doing? What are you, you doing? Just, you just have to be clear with him. And that's I'm, it. The thing is... We, we are going to Berlin's son. But End even story. after I told him that, he's like, is this a different country? Yeah. I'm like, no, this is Those things don't city. bother me at all. Oh my like, gosh. Kids have questions. I don't care. I'm the kind of person where when I'm in the car, I want to like mentally check out. And I want to listen to music, and I want to enjoy the scenery that is passing before my eyes. How old is Juliet? I do not want the scenery interrupted by... How old is Juliet? One and a half. So we're going to have to wait uh, another 17 years for that to happen. I'm sorry. Did I just depress you? No, actually, I can't wait until they're teenagers and they don't want to hang out with us. And they're like, "Uh, you guys are lame. I don't want to hang out with you. It's going to be switching. And I'll be like, love me. Like right now, we're going to be interrupted by five Okay, what's up? Should we take a parenting pause or do I just say kick them out? Oh, there's two of them. 
Um, can hear. Not like no. Right now. Yeah. But a little bit, and, 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 then, and then that's it. No, I think we're good. I show them how to play it. They can't see you, sweetheart. Mm-hmm. They can hear you, but they can't see you. Um, All right, we're going to parenting pause real quick. Right, let's parent let's pause parenting it. pause. And we're back from the parenting pause. We are back. Yeah. We made it. Mm-hmm. Um, what were we talking about? Being sick? Being sick. Being sick. Mexican Mexican stuff. <laughs> um, opening an IPA. And Lindsay just told me that's bad for antibiotics, but I feel better already, so. That's like a, yeah. when you're on antibiotics and then having your birth control not be effective. Hmm. Yeah. I'm never going to have to worry about that. That you know of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, shout out to Santa Fe Brewing Company. Since we're on the topic. Since yeah. we're on the topic. Of unplanned pregnancy. No, I'm mm-hmm. just kidding. <laughs> I'm just I am enjoying kidding. a 7K IPA, um, which is lovely. I love IPAs, and I didn't always love them. Um, can you hold up? Did the you mic? run a 7K? I did not. Do you know what 7K IPA do? Do you know the meaning behind it? No, Penny. No. So 7K, of course, is 7,000, right? Santa Fe is uh, 7,000 feet above sea level. Ah. So there you have it. They're like bragging about their elevation or whatever. That's okay. I like it. Yeah. Take that, Denver. <laughs> we always Suck like, it, Denver. We always like to <laughs> bash on Denver. In all reality, Denver's Pretty got great. a lot going for it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, they had their women's march today. Who? Denver, Denver did? did? Oh, I okay. guess there was a pretty good turnout. Ours uh, here in Albuquerque is tomorrow, and I will be going to that. That might make some people angry, but they you can wear talk a... to me about my reasoning if they'd like to. Are you going to wear a pink hat? No, no, not mm-hmm. a pink hat. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of Denver and somebody who hates IPAs, mm-hmm. I follow somebody on Twitter. Uh, he used to be a reporter here at KOB. His name is Jeremy Hohola. Yeah. Love that guy. Oh, oh, hola. Hola. <laughs> we are so lame. <laughs> Cheers. Jeremy. This Jeremy. is for you. Yep. Love Jeremy Hohola and his Twitter feed. He has a little furry dog. and um, I like the kind of local celebrities who respond to the people on yeah. Twitter. You know what I mean? Maybe he should run for president. Yeah. He should. I'd vote for him. Um, yeah. He runs too. He's a runner. Is he a runner? Yeah. Do you follow him too? I mean. Cool. Do you know who else I follow who uh, used to be a KOB reporter? Who? Gotti Schwartz. Yeah, that little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, he left us for Los Angeles. I feel betrayed. Do you know who he does? He runs the... I'm sorry. He runs... The, yes. God forbid that Gotti Schwartz, you know, progresses his career. <laughs> we thought you were New Mexico We thought you true. were loyal. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, he he runs the NBC nightly news like Snapchat thing. Who's here? I don't know. I... Should I go check? Here, talk go about take Jeremy a... Hohola. I don't have a lot to say about him, other than he's a very nice man. <laughs> I don't know. First the kids, now the dogs. I don't know what's happening here. You know, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's been a weird, weird weekend. I wanted to give a shout out to Pars, Persian cuisine, here in Albuquerque, since we're doing shout outs to local New Mexican things. Um, I went there last night, enjoyed some delicious Persian food, saw some they belly were, They dancing. were barking at nothing. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. And um, they have a great food. Good date spot if you're looking to take your, your lady or your, your old man somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's a good romantic <clears throat> spot, but it's also unique. Um, or your lover who thinks they're a wolf. Your lover. Hello, um, lover. Okay, you're weirding me out. <laughs> Saturday um, Night Live. Okay. When they're in the hot tub. Okay. You don't remember? Uh, I do, yes. See, you're so, so not So, 
We were talking about Jeremy Hohola. Wow, right? you have a serious Hohola <laughs> problem. I have a whole whole lot of problems. Oh <laughs> wow. All right. You know, I wonder I wonder if in high school his he got made fun of for his name or people just like didn't they weren't on the level yet. I don't know. No, he was probably like, Hey guys, I'm gonna be a badass newsman in Denver one day. You just watch it. That's probably what he did. And I have a handsome little dog. Mm-hmm. He's kind of like Ron Burgundy. His wife's an educator, by the way. Cool. In Denver. I'm glad you know everything about his wife, too. I follow people on Twitter. Yeah, on Twitter. You mm-hmm. can, like, just stalk people on Twitter. It's yeah, not even a thing. On Twitter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Twitter. Twitter's a really strange place. I know I talk it's about it It's not a place. It is a place. It is a virtual place. <sighs> Things happen in Twitter land. They do. It depends on who you surround yourself around. Like... The world, Lindsay's shaking her head right now, but Twitter is a place. Like, our president is on Twitter 24-7. That's like his presidency is Twitter. Like, people are paying attention to Twitter. Although I must say, since they uh, increased the character limit, it used to be like 140. Now it's like 280 or something. I think they doubled it. I'm not sure. It just is overkill on the amount of reading you have to (laughs) I think one of the things people liked about Twitter was that you didn't have to read a lot to get your information. That's why I liked it, because I'm not, I'm not one to like, see, I... He's a teacher, but he hates to read. <clears throat> no, I enjoy reading. I know, we talk about I, I enjoy time. I enjoy reading if Wait, it's guys, fascinating. Wait, guys, he's reading a book right now. I'm still in the last chapter, by the way. All right. I enjoy reading if it's something that's fascinating, but if somebody has this long run on, you know, thought... And the first, like, word doesn't catch me. I'm out. Like, I'm like, this is a waste of time. I'm not going to read this whole damn thing if it's not going to catch my attention. People put their, like, social justice manifestos on Twitter. No, they like, really do. People are like, well, yeah. I'll read it later. <laughs> one thing that, I'm, one thing that I'm, point, I'm starting to notice is that, well, so I follow a lot of, like, Christians and ex-Christians and ex-evangelicals and new Christians and... People who have deconstructed their faith and have reconstructed and blah blah blah. That's a really pretty picture. We're we're sitting in, in front of our TV and we got the Google. We got the Google. You can open your Google Home app. Looks like our next vacation. It's a Google Chromecast and it it does like a screensaver thing, but it's got a looks like Sweden or Switzerland That's or something. Probably why I like it. I don't know. Squirrel. Um, what was I talking about? Twitter. Social justice manifest. Okay. Yeah, so so of- yeah, so I, I follow these people and I, what I'm what I'm starting to notice is that they've gone from fundamentalism to fundamentalism, just another flavor of fundamentalism. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. So if you're like a, if you're a Christian and you're like the world is 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 4000 years old and you know, Job had a pet dinosaur and all this other stuff and uh you know, whatever. You like you Fundamentalism is fundamentalism, right? You're right. Everybody else is wrong. You can't be convinced. Um, you don't listen to other people. You don't you don't empathize. You're just like, you're an idiot. Stop being an idiot. Get saved or go to hell, right? But on the flip side, that's what I grew up with. I'm not even joking. No, I know. Um, um, I'll talk on, about this in a second because I have something to wrap that in. On the flip side, like people are like, okay, pro-choice is the way, uh, you know, whatever else. I don't know what else. What else is on the other side? I don't know. Whatever it is. Um, and if you have any sort of differing idea, then like it's the end of the world, right? Like I don't know. You know it's like it's okay. I, I it's know extreme. that I'm Ex- be extreme getting, to extreme. I'm going to be getting flack from people that are a lot more conservative than myself for going to the women's march tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I like that people are constantly putting the abortion spin on everything because I'm mm-hmm. like, it's not even about that. And if you knew anything about the Women's March, you would realize that it has, it's not even, it's not like a pro-life, pro-choice thing. Mm-hmm. Like it's about yeah. women empowering yeah. women and, and women being empowered and standing up to social injustices against women. Um, and, I, and I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm a woman. Yep. I have daughters. <clears throat> but people get daughter. pissed. Yeah. And I guess I have a daughter. Um, but it's like, people get pissed and I'm like, you know, I think there's a lot of different flavors of activism. You don't have to go so extreme Mm -hmm. all the time. Um, I watched this series. It's a docu-series on YouTube 
Um, it's probably not just on YouTube, but it's called, where is it? Oh, Real Stories. Um, and it's British. It's a, it's a British documentary hmm. series. It's on YouTube? Yeah. Is that the one you showed me where the guy thought he was a wolf? Um, no, that's a different, that's a different docuseries. I like, I like documentaries. I like... Documentaries are fun. I watched one last night, actually, when you were on your women's night. I like watching things about real people because real people are more interesting than fiction, I think. And so I watched real stories. And the cool thing is, like, it's a British documentary team, but they tend to, um capture a lot of like American subcultures so it's a really interesting um perspective and I watched one called Texas Teenage Virgins it's a documentary on virginity um and the purity movement if you grew up in mainstream Christianity then you know what I'm talking about um it's the abstinence and purity movement in the United States in in Christianity um being a 90s 2000s child that was pretty heavy in my church experience as a teenager too and um, it was really interesting to watch this documentary just because there was a lot of things that I, I watched from the outside looking in and I'm like, wow, that's really damaging. Um, you know, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting. I would encourage anybody to like check it out. Um, but you can go on YouTube and look up real stories and they have like a big series on different things. They're just always interesting topics. So. Yeah. I Sounds just, interesting. I remember the purity culture in high school and my parents like buying me a purity ring and like all this stuff hmm. and like I definitely don't think I will be doing that for my daughter because I think that it's just a flawed perspective. But so there's like a there's like a pool between that, right? What do you there's mean? like so there's the hardline, you know, Christian sort of stance that we were brought up in that says, you know, don't do anything with anybody, don't kiss, don't make out, definitely don't do, like, sex or anything like that. Don't do sex. <laughs> don't do sex. <laughs> um, and then there's... Please the, don't, if that's how you refer to again, it. And again, like, I think, like, we're, we tend to, like, separate into extremes, right? There's that, and then on the extreme end, is like, well, a woman is a woman, and, like, she's got desires, and she needs to... Do well, whatever some, she wants to do. Like some people take it to like an animalistic level of like just fulfill your urge and like do mm -hmm. that because that's natural. Yeah. And while it might be, I think that you know you still you're still a spiritual and emotional being, so you have to take that into account too, and an intellectual one. Right. You so know. that's going to be crazy hard to. I mean, this is all going to be your territory with. No, it's going to be both of ours. Well, I mean, I don't know what it's like to be a woman. So no, but gonna, you know what it's like to be a father. I don't. I don't have past. <clears throat> experiences that I can draw from to like share with her and to explain to her like hey this is this is my knowledge and I want to share this with you I think you can explain to her what goes on in men's brains and how respect is perceived mm -hmm. by a by a teenage boy right <laughs> you know so yeah, yeah that, I mean j just just learning how to teach our kids like not not just our daughter our sons like about love and sex and everything else mm -hmm. I don't know. America's weird. Yeah. But so. anyway, you should check out those documentaries. They're interesting. Yeah. Sounds like it. I like how your YouTube um, flavor is very is very um, thoughtful and like educational. And I was watching a YouTube video this morning about this guy. He's like, let's see what happens when we boil gasoline. <laughs> and, it's like, and then the glass <laughs> exploded. And I'm like, well, what did you think was going to happen? Did it explode? I didn't watch yeah. the end. It exploded. Oh, cool. Nice. Uh, before that, he was mixing uh, chlorine with uh, brake fluid. What is he, like Walter White? Like, he, what is he doing? He's like a chemist. He, he does chemistry. Like, he knows a lot about chemistry, but Better he just... Better chemistry than doing sex. <laughs> doing sex oh. with chemistry. Oh, um, well, he mixed there should be chemistry. Brake fluid with uh, chlorine, and there's, if, after you wait, it's like a minute and 30 seconds or something, there's this crazy reaction that happens, and it just bursts into flames. It's kind of cool. That's my YouTube. And then the other one was a guy who was like nitpicking the good dinosaur. <laughs> that was so annoying. I was like, dude, it is a kid's movie. They're not looking at it from like historical accuracy. It's like the Apatosaurus doesn't have a, a tail that drags on the floor. That image of an Apatosaurus is outdated. It's from the 70s. I love him though. He's great. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> shut your mouth. My five-year-old does not care. He does actually. Luke does care. He... Not about that. He doesn't know what historical accuracy is. In, in 15 years, you know Luke's going to have some sort of dinosaur YouTube channel. Maybe. Yeah. 
So, all right, let's take a pause for text I, messaging. It's my mom again. Right. Can you calm down? I'm, mm. I will not. Yeah. So. Ugh. <laughs> okay. I asked my mom, hey, do you guys want to do dinner with us tonight? Cheesecake factory? Question mark. And she says, thanks for the offer. No, just getting home from a funeral. And I wrote, ugh. <laughs> She's going to think you were upset or something. No, she's not. Huh. What is that? I took a picture of something and oh, I have like no idea. Zoo parking lot. No, I have no idea weird. what that is. That's so weird. Why is it? It's not. A, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's in Santa Fe. Yay. That's the weird. The parking lot in Santa Fe. Hmm. Well then. All right. <laughs> I think we're running out of things to talk about, aren't we? We can talk about Belen. You always make it so awkward when you say that. I know. I hate that because then I actually do have things that I'm like, oh, actually, well, I did. No. So, B- <laughs> Belen was fun, right? Yeah. And as we were driving up to Belen, I was thinking about how I do like to see new places, even if it's Belen. Um, Belen is nice. If you live in Belen, it's it's how a, many times it's a do great you place. To say Belen in this sentence, my goodness. <laughs> what? Are if you you're taking shots, slow down. <laughs> Who is going to start listening to our podcast and say, every time he says Belen... There's another one. <laughs> um, no, I mean, B- Belen is a nice place. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious. I have some friends who live there. And, you Wait, know... where do they live? Don't worry about it. Bethlehem. <laughs> um... And you know that you can get land if you want a horse. It's a good place if it's you want to, if you have a horse. Yeah, it's really cheap. You can get you can go to what's that place called? Uh, like I know, I know. No, the place that we went to, Belen Acres or Belen Estates or something. The Harvey House. No, the little neighborhood that we drove to today. Oh. The Belen. Rio Communities. Rio they're Communities. Like, they're like their own. Um, yeah, you can get a house there for like a hundred thousand dollars or less. Pretty cheap. Well, the funny thing is, we were driving through it, and it looked like a '70s subdivision that had been like abandoned. Mm-hmm. And Lorenzo was like, "This is where people go to hide." No, seriously, that's what it felt like. Like, there's nothing out there. I mean, there's houses, but it's like, it's weird. It's, you get this weird feeling out there. Some of the ho- the houses aren't really kept up. They're like at one time, like maybe in the '70s, they were really nice, but they weren't. They're not kept up anymore. Yards are like deserty. There's, you know. Tumbleweeds everywhere. It looks like a movie dirt. set that is overrun. Um, yeah, like, it's it, it was really strange. Yeah. And we drove by, and there was a couple, like older couple, maybe like late sixties or something. They were just standing in front of their door, smoking a cigarette. They looking weren't looking out into nothing. They weren't talking to each other. They were just smoking. Yeah. Just smoking. And I was like, it was. I just got this weird feeling, like yeah, like if you're in the mob or something, <laughs> and. You pissed the wrong person off. Like this is where you get sent. Yeah, to Belen, to uh, oops, sorry guys, to, your to the Rio protection. communities. Yeah, Rio communities is code um, for like you're hiding from the mob. Yeah, <laughs> That's terrible. but uh, as I was as we were driving out there, I was thinking like, I'm so we just said a few minutes earlier that we're restless. I am restless about my location. Um, we've tried to move before. Right, what are you looking at? Okay. What are you doing? Okay. Okay. Because I'm not blind. Here. <laughs> He's over there. He saw one of Lorenzo's tools and he was like examining it. And I was like, oh, cool. We're going to like chop off a finger now. He didn't, he didn't think I could see him. It's funny because Luke will be laying in his bed at night and I'll be laying down. They have bunk beds. And I'll be laying on the bottom bunk and I'll be like, Lay down, Luke. And he's like, how can you see me? And I'm like, I see everything. (laughs) And he's like, can you see me now? And I'm like, yeah, lay down. And he's like... (gasps) (laughs) (laughs) It's so funny. Because he's like, how do you know what I'm doing? And I'm like, it's not that hard to guess. Mm -hmm. So I'm restless, right? I I, want to go to the Cheesecake Factory. I don't. (laughs) I definitely do. Our yeah. kids love that place, and it's loud, which is awesome. It's also very crowded, and it's very... I know, which means no one's going to look at us and be like, make your kids be quiet. Yeah. Um, he did say we were going to go out to dinner some, sometime tonight. Mm-hmm. You, you promised. Uh-huh. Yeah, maybe. It's Saturday. Maybe we'll go to... 
Bob's Burgers or something. Oh my gosh. Um, I love Bob's. Yeah, so, okay. <clears throat> but that's not... Um, restlessness. I wanted, to, I wanted to say that. So going out to Berlin, was, it was nice like to see different scenery other than inside my house and inside my classroom and you know my little short little eight to eight to twelve minute commute that I have every morning every every afternoon blah 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 like as I see the same thing over and over and over so it's nice to go take this little forty five minute drive south and see something different yeah i'm not I'm not familiar with Belen i mean like i'm not very I've been there multiple times i guess maybe a handful of times but uh you know, it's, it's different go up there with you sometime and go to the brewery to Belen yeah. To the little tap room thing that's mm, by the railroad. It would be an experience, I guess. Yeah. Well, we wouldn't have to drive. Yeah. It'd be kind of fun. Um, I don't it know. It reminds me of a desert Moberly, sort of. Yeah, Moberly, Missouri. Look Moberly, it up. Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not even going to talk about Moberly right now. Yeah. So, we're supposed to get a cold front tonight, and I'm really hoping that it rains or snows. It says 85% chance at 10 tonight of rain. Huh. So, I'm like, please, 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 please. Yeah. But it's been really nice and sunny and warm today, so I'm kind of like, yeah, right. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. I just had to get that out because I've been thinking about it all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, when, when we went on that little trip today to Belen, I... Shut, uh, shut, 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 shut. What? Everybody. I, I'm, I'm like addicted to that scenery sort of, sort of thing. You You're know what I mean? addicted to the work, I'm addicted too. to like... Are you addicted to love? Seeing and experiencing something new. You know, like getting on a plane and going somewhere and traveling somewhere. But for me, sometimes I feel like, sometimes I get so restless in my current situation that I'm like, I just need to move somewhere permanently. Yeah, I feel that way. You know what I mean? Um, I think changing our furniture around might have been a temporary solve for that. That's, I think that might be why I do that, to kind of change my change my surroundings. Well, you know, it's funny because some people like some people like hate change, like change mm-hmm. freaks them out. But I think you and I are both people that kind of crave change. Yeah, I think change freaks out your parents. Like a positive thing. Yeah, no, yeah, I so, got you. Because we, it can blow up in our face, and we're both like, "Let's move to blah blah blah." Yeah, let's yeah. do it. And then it's like this wait, summer wait, was wait, 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 this wait. summer was crazy. <laughs> like, like we were going to Portland. Like we were moving to Portland. We told my what parents. Were we? I mean, my my mom was like crying, and she was she was angry, and she was crying, and she was. I think she said everything. something like, "You guys are gonna regret it," and we were like, "She she, not. she she told me I'm gonna pray to God that He puts roadblocks in your way." It's like I guess your prayers were answered. What is with people praying to God for <laughs> physical things? Roadblocks, hedges of protection, yeah. like yeah, a covering. Yeah, what's up, Luke? You little rascal, you. Uh, can I have water? You could. You can have some water. Go ahead. No, um, I mean not water. Um, I knew there was more one, than one one water. More Oreo and then that's oh, it. now it's one more Oreo. You give a mouse a cookie, and then he wants another cookie in the form of a cookie. <sighs> we have been trying to get these kids to, like, entertain themselves. <laughs> all day long and they are so clingy um i was woken up this morning with riley on one side and luke on the other side and they were like squishing me like a sandwich and then they were like scoot over luke no you scoot over you scoot over i want to be next to her no i do and then i got like wedged in between my bed and the wall and they were both like clawing each other to (laughs) to lay next to me like a couple of weirdos um, I don't know. Everybody says I'm going to miss this someday. I'm, I'm having a hard time believing that cause I kind of just wanted to sleep today. Um, and then Lorenzo was smart and he went into their bottom bunk, which is pretty big. It's like a, it's like a full, I think, or a twin. I'm not sure. And, um, he was in there by himself sleeping and I was like, you son of a gun. Um, so I got the baby and I got the kids and I'm like, go find daddy. It's time for pancakes. Um, and they ran in there and jumped on him. And I was like, serves you right. <laughs> if I can't sleep in, neither can you. Maybe it was a little vengeful, but it was one of those things where he outsmarted me and I was like too tired to deal with that garbage. So I'm really hoping that uh, we get some sleep tonight. Lorenzo's blowing his nose, and I'm also hoping that we go to the Cheesecake Factory. Hey. 
Hi. How's your nose? How's your acid snot? It's still acid. Your face isn't melting, so I think you're all right. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. What were you talking about just now? Oh, just the Cheesecake Factory. Oh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> yeah? Oh, I hear screaming. Lovely. We can't do anything. <laughs> yeah. It's like we're in prison. I'm glad we get to create this little thing, though. Yeah. You know? Yeah. On the... Uh, and there's pounding. Should I feel we take like we a? Should be concerned, but I also feel like this is kind of normal. So. Yeah, it's normal. It's normal. Um. So what have you been listening to? Um. <clears throat> well, I wanted to say what I've been reading first. No. Not a book. No, you're not allowed. I read an ar- I read an article. What is happening? There's shrieking happening. I'm gonna parenting pause. Oh lordy. Can I? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're back. Um, if you guys like our parenting pause music, that's from my good friend Jeff Omidvaron. Check out his SoundCloud. It's just Jeff Omidvaron. Um, and he has a website, jeffomidvaron.com. So he's a very talented uh, guitarist, musician, banjoist. Uh, what's the other stringed instrument? I don't know. He mandolin? plays mandolin, mandolinist. And uh, synthesizerist, and uh, now he's a computer engineer, so he's all around a very talented individual. Check him out. Also, shout out to um, Ryan P. Freeman, Lindsay's brother. Uh, he writes books, and he does uh, social media consulting, all kinds of cool stuff. Awesome. They also got new flooring at their house, so go hang out at their house, knock on their door in Hannibal, Missouri, and, and invite yourself in. He wouldn't mind. Tell him you're cold. Um, bring, I'll make you some coffee. Bring him beer, though. Plenty yeah, of cold. dark brew, like a porter or a, or a stout or something like that. Maybe a red, it would be, you'd be all right with. And also bring your knowledge of fantasy books. Um, and, uh, he would welcome you to his home with very nice flooring. Um, so you're doing something really cool with your necklaces. Oh, it's nothing fancy. It's um, really fancy. I, I'm really proud of you. Oh, thanks. Oh, shucks. Oh, jeez. So, um, but I also feel kind of like a, I don't know, sucker. Why? Because <laughs> I bought you one of those necklaces for Christmas and the lady told me, she's like, oh, yeah, she travels around France and collects these uh, these uh, pendants from, you know, vintage stores in, in Paris. And I was like, I was like, oh, really? Cool. Lindsay would love this. And I got her a necklace. And sure enough, like, <laughs> Lindsay, I'm not saying that it was like a bad necklace. It was a nice necklace. But you're making these good quality necklaces now. Yeah, well, I just kind of thought, like, that's nice, but I could I could make that myself. And so I've been making them myself. Um, and I have a couple on back order right now, which I need to I need to get back on. Um, but I've started a little, I'll have an Etsy business up soon, but it's called Jules and Riley, um, handmade jewelry, because it's, you know, Juliet and Riley are two of our little guys. And um, it's Jules and Riley Jewelry, NM, at gmail.com. But Jules is spelled... Like Jules, J E W E L S. So Jules and Riley, jewelry and I'm at gmail.com. Um, if you have any questions for me, I can always do an order for you. Mm-hmm. And then I have an Instagram. Um, but I'm making. Some What's your Instagram stuff. anyway? Is um, it at Jules and Riley? I believe so. Let me look and find out for you. Okay. But yeah, I'm making some really cool, like New Mexico necklaces. Um, and I'm selling them at uh, Helix Yoga and Coffee. 
which we shouted out like two weeks ago. I think so. Yeah. Right. Um, oh, it's it's at Jules and Riley and um. So at, J- on Instagram. U- yeah, on Instagram. So it's J U L E S and R I L E Y, N M. Uh, so there I am. Do you enjoy it? I do. I feel like I always need a um creative outlet of some kind so it's nice and I like jewelry and I can never I'm very picky about jewelry mm-hmm. I noticed that like oh excuse me so I put a lot of like I put a lot of myself into the jewelry I make because I'm super picky about jewelry you have good style <laughs> well thank you with stuff thanks um, I like things that are visually <clears throat> pleasing <laughs> yeah aesthetically pleasing I don't know um I like hot men <laughs> 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 good <laughs> um like the necklace i got you uh i necklaces. got you i got you i bought purchased you. for you got i don't you. know bought for you yeah. i feel like got is a very new mexican that their necklace i got you that's not new mexican no yeah i got you that i got you that tamale <laughs> mm. <laughs> It was so funny. Today, I actually pitched the idea to Lindsay that we should move to Hispaniola. <laughs> and I was like, nope. I cannot see myself getting excited about that. Why do the birds fly upside down in Hispaniola? <laughs> oh, we all know that one. Yeah, I know. I think that was one of our first things yeah. we ever said on this podcast. So you guys should know the answer to that. I'm not even going to say it. Yeah, today I was like, you know what? I think we should move to Espa. <laughs> and Lindsay was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't think so. It's like I like Taos and I like Santa Fe, but I don't like a whole lot of between those places. So, um, mm-hmm. so the necklace I got you, mm-hmm. got you. I don't. I feel weird about saying got you. Get over I don't know. It. It's okay. Um, I found but it was too short. Yeah. yeah. You like like longer necklaces? Yeah, I do. I like really long, like vintage looking pendants and stuff. Um, <clears throat> I like. <laughs> it's funny because I'm not Catholic, but I like Catholic inspired jewelry i like the rosary i love beads. catholic art by the way i do too like i i, I want to get a jesus candle and put it in my classroom i just do you should um no i like i like the rosary beads i just put like regular pendants on them mm-hmm. uh could that be considered like offensive offensive or sacrilegious to a catholic no, no. because Person. it's not it's not a rosary mm-hmm. rosaries are made a certain way and they have a certain number of beads but um i know i prayed the rosary one time more than once at my aunt Eleanor's house when I was a kid. Hmm. I hated it. I hated it. She's like, before you go to bed, you have to pray the rosary. It's like, oh my gosh, I have homework. <laughs> I have homework. I just want to now, sleep. It was. It, it felt like it took. Like this is a memory that I'm always gonna have. I, I think I might have been Luke's age, and I felt like it lasted like probably two, three hours. I hear crying. Seriously, like you had to pray the. Our fathers, and then you, there's a... What's up, Riley? What's that face? Oh, daddy, 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 I, 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 I want some cookie. You want some cookie? I thought you already had a cookie. You had two cookies. Uh, mommy, I mommy, I, I, I want some cookies. Okay, all right, hang on. I want some We're gonna... cookies. Oh my goodness, they're cookie mongers. It's funny, like now that they know we have cookies, they're asking for them constantly. We usually just hide them. Um, we have birthday cake Oreos right now, but better them than me, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, so I make jewelry. And um, I found a really good wholesaler here locally that does a lot of the charms. Um, and they laser cut them, so they're pretty great. And um, I have a couple going up to Washington State for, for a married couple. Mama. Yes, ma'am. On special request, and then um, another one I need to make this weekend, too, when my stuff comes in. So I'm pretty excited. I like it. Um, it'll be fun to go drop off my business cards, and then, which also came in today, and then um, go see at Helix uh, if I've sold any and which ones. So far, the New Mexico, the New Mexico-themed ones are, like, the biggest demand, which is interesting. Um, it's not what I thought it would be, but, yeah, so... I'm kind of excited to have this little this little Etsy thing happening and just kind of trying to, you know, make a little side cash, a little side hustle. So we'll see what happens. It's mostly just so that I can have like a creative outlet, but hopefully it'll be a good source of something in the future. Yeah. 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 
Okay, this no side more, hustle no is fun. Cookies for those kids. No, I know. Like they can't. Man cannot exist on cookies. I know, but there's just there's just it. something about like having time with you, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't care if you're Take watching Netflix days. and eating cookies. Like, I don't know. Um, yeah. So I have been following. This is on a serious note. Like mm-hmm. I've been following that news story about that couple that yeah. shackled their 13 children mm-hmm. in their home in California. And I'm like, I'm just like appalled. And I know that, I mean, if I wasn't, there'd be something wrong with me, but yeah, I'm just like, how, how does this stuff go on for that long? And nobody knows. See, and, and I, I don't, right. I, I, I read the headlines but I didn't read into the story and I was kind of asking you information about it. I don't know much about it, but Pe- well, people are people are nuts. There's some details that are coming out which are like really disturbing. Like, I guess they moved a couple times, so like every couple of years they moved. They were in California. right? They were in California, but before that they <clears> were in Texas, and then they were in like, I guess it was like Arkansas or Alabama, something like that. Hmm. Um, so they moved. Mm-hmm. So, and they made the kids stay awake at night and sleep during the day. Why? Well, think about it. If you're sleeping during the day, you're not going outside. Nobody's seeing you. You're not doing anything. They're not... They don't know that there's people in the house. So does that mean that they stayed up at night, too? I would assume so. Yeah. The mugshots for the two people were just hideous. And the crazy thing is, like, I was reading... So they had their vows renewed, the parents, Mm -hmm. like, three separate times. And they were all, like, two years apart from each other. Why, why I, would, what, what is the purpose of a vow renewal? That's just like a... Like a, hey, yay, we still love each other. We're celebrating our marriage. But like every two years is insane. That's excessive. Every two years they did that? Almost. Yeah. From like 2011 until like, it was like 2011, 2015. 2013, 13, 13, 15, 15, 17. Yeah. And it was in Vegas and like... It was just, I'm like, who does that? Like there's something mentally off about those people and... It's just so sad. They said that the kids were so skinny that, like, the 29-year-old was 80 pounds and that she looked like she was, like, 12. That's crazy. So they didn't even know that they were grown adults because they were so sick. That's crazy. And that just breaks my heart. And, like, I guess another one of the kids, they were saying, didn't even know what a policeman was. So they were, I guess, they never went to school. No, no, the father uh-huh. claimed he had their home registered as a home school. And he was registered mm. as the principal. But doesn't, doesn't like the, I guess California is a big state and there's a lot of people there, but like, aren't they supposed to be, aren't, aren't they supposed to check in with like the PED, public education department? I or? was reading an article about that. Um, uh-huh. There's basically some loophole in California, which prevented them from having to check in, hmm. which like, is a big problem. And I think a lot of, and I'm just going to say it. I think that if you have loopholes like that mm-hmm. and you're, and you're not checking on your homeschools, you better be. Because yeah. that could be a big cover for abuse, and that could be a big cover for things going on, obviously, right. that are not supposed to be going on. So, you want to homeschool your kids? That's good, but you should probably be accountable. I don't know if it's good. <laughs> I'm saying if that's good for you, like, great, do that. But, like, yeah, we all know how I feel about homeschooling, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a messed up thing. Like, our, our world is changing right in front of our eyes, too. Mm. I mean, I know that there's crazy stuff that happens all the time. All over the world and in our country, like the United States is, the United States is not perfect. Like I, I was brought up um, feeling like very patriotic. Like the United States can do no wrong. Like we're 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 a wonderful country, which we are. Like I, I think the U.S. is great. Like our we have a great we have great people. We have a great diverse people. Um, but. There's just some crazy people out there, like, and yeah. and I don't know if it's the way our culture is or, or what, but uh, oh, Ed, Ed Sheeran is engaged. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Whoop de doo. Our Google TV, dang it. Uh, it's just like 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 the other day I was thinking about how technology is changing our world, and me, I'm I'm, I am super excited about every technology, right. And I am always consuming technology and, and I, I find myself like trying not to consume technology or thinking to myself like maybe I'll just leave my cell phone home for a couple days or three or four days or whatever, but I never do. 
but I'm always consuming media. I'm always consuming music. I'm always consuming podcasts. I'm always consuming Netflix. Time. I'm always consuming Mommy. whatever. Yeah. Daddy, I, I was in cookie. Of course you did. Another cookie. They're all jacked up on all of us. Mommy. I think I think they want to hear. I <laughs> Okay. Mommy, I, I, I want some We're gonna play another Jeff Amedron song and take a parenting pause. We'll be right back. There you go, Jeff. Get it. That's my jam, Jeff. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Man, I feel so much better, by the way. Do you? I, I am starting to realize that when I get sick, I'm such a baby. <laughs> um, that's called having a man cold. Um, so, I gotta tell you this. Like, I was pretty sick on Thursday and Friday, and I had um, uh, very little patience with the students of mine at school. Um... And I also got a little bit emotional. Like, I, I was talking to kids and I almost started crying. Like, it was I, so crazy. When I went to visit you on Thursday, I um, walked by your, I guess it was your neighbor's classroom. Book? I, I, maybe. I don't know. And he's like, you guys, I need you to listen. I need, you guys, I cannot do this if you do not listen. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. That was Mr. Krill. Uh. Yeah. He, uh, he is one of the most intelligent individuals like he could be teaching a graduate level course like no problem like he's just insane he's the physics and calculus teacher <laughs> he is insanely smart he's also a beekeeper and a coin collector he makes tons of money like collecting rare coins That's and rad. like food stamp stuff and he food stamps fo like the, the food stamp uh, tokens people collect those like the from like the 70s and 60s and stuff huh. um but yeah, he's a bee he's a beekeeper and he's making mead out of his out of his honey. I want some. Uh, Does he sell it? No, he he, he just gives it away to friends, like close can, friends of his. Can you ask him if, if if we're a close friend? If we can have some. Yeah. I'll make I'll design so, a really cool label for him. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't know if he Yeah. So uh, yeah, Buck's a cool guy. But anyway, um, yeah, I was in front of the class, and I'm, I'm sick, right? And I, I, I'm acting different, and the kids know it. Yeah, the um, kids are smart. So, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm starting talking about energy and, and how our bodies make energy, and mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, and we're talking about the formula for mitochondria, blah, 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 blah. And it's very hard stuff to comprehend. And um, I'm not, and I asked the kids, like, Hey guys, is, is is this stuff hard for you? It is. And and they're like, and everybody's like, yeah, this is hard. Um, which by the way, most of these kids told me that science was their favorite class, which is very humbling to me. That my classroom was their favorite class. Lindsay's reorganizing as we speak. The light from the um, is not efficient, and I'm putting it somewhere where it will be. Yeah. And I told them, like, I asked them, I was like, guys, is this, is, this hard? is this hard to understand? Is science hard? And, like, almost all of them said, yes, science is hard. Science is hard. Um, and, I, and I started to go, and I was like, guys, this is hard. This is going to be hard. Photosynthesis is hard. Cellular respiration is hard. The carbon cycle is hard. Struggle for life is this hard. stuff is hard. No, and then I started going, I was like, guys... I want, I want to challenge you guys. I, I, and I told them, I, I don't want to make it easy just to make it easy. I want to challenge you guys. And I know that you guys can do it. And I was like having confidence in them. I was like, you guys can do it. I'm here to help you. I'm, you guys can do it. And, and, I, and I said, you guys, are, you, guys are, you guys are freshmen now. You're going to be sophomores. And before you know it, you're going to be adults. And like, does it get easier when, you're, when you graduate high school? 
I asked him a question. They're like, they're like, no, I'm just like, ask your parents. Like, is it easy right now for your parents? And I, and I teach at Highland, so a lot of the kids, it's a hard life. Like, it is. They're in a hard spot anyway. Um, yeah. I was like, ask your parents. It's for not sure. easy. It's going to be a challenge to do everything. And I... <laughs> As I was saying, I was like, I almost got emotional. I was like, I started like, crying in front of me. It's coming. You don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but I was sick and I just felt, emo- I felt, em- I feel emotional when I'm sick. It was just crazy to me, but. It's because you're a man. Yeah. No, but I, I do, I do, I do love those kids. They're, 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 great. they're great. They're great kids. I was like, no, I think there's like, it's funny when men are sick, you guys, maybe you get emotional. When women are super sick, we just want our moms. Like, yeah. like even when I'm sick now, like. I'm like, I just want to go to my parents' house. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to sleep in their spare sleep room. Sleep in their spare room. Again. <laughs> like, I just want to be by my parents. Mm-hmm. Like, and it, I don't know what that's about. Because it's like, even if I go to my parents' house and they're not home, like, or they're at work that day, I still feel very comforted, like, camping mm-hmm. out at their house when I'm sick. Right. I'm like, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. Um, <laughs> it's so strange. Yeah. Uh, human beings are weird. I feel like we need to buy another lamp now. <laughs> you're like so all over the place I'm, well, you're no, like being sick oh we need to buy another lamp no because I'm, I'm like looking we have one more lamp I know but it's in our bedroom no in the garage we have a lamp no. my, my grandpa made it oh I was going to say something but I won't say anything my mom would love to have that lamp and I actually do love that lamp because it's it gives me f- the feels because my grandpa made it you put it over there I will okay. um yeah so and I had something I was going to tell I love you. lamp <laughs> yeah, I, love I do too. I like our house now. It's like rearranged. It's weird. You like I ch- you change the surroundings for me a little bit, and I'm like, Freeze I'm, all I'm all about it. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. Diego, get off that chair. He's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Our house is. I'm. Yeah. I'm. I just. Bleh. Do you like New Mexico? Yeah, I do. Yeah. There's things about it that I don't like, but then there's things about it that I have missed when I'm not here. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I definitely like, I, I have this idea in my mind, like, that I'm going to move somewhere. So, okay, for the, the first time I visited Portland with you, we lived in Missouri, right? I had no idea, by the way, how we scraped up enough money to get to Portland I don't know when either. we lived in Missouri because we were so Probably dirt cards. poor. That's what we did. I, think we I don't think we had credit no, cards. No, we bought our tickets with our tax return. Did we? Yes, I remember. Okay. Yep. Um... But I remember going there and feeling like I was just in the mountains everywhere. Like in New Mexico, we have these little evergreen little islands, which are the mountains, right? You go to the mountains and there's, and there's, there's tall pine trees everywhere and it smells lovely. And it's just, it's a most amazing experience you can ever have is being in the mountains in New Mexico. I just love it. Mm -hmm. Um, But when I was in Portland, I was like, there's trees everywhere. And not just any trees, the trees that I love. I love these pine trees. I want to be here. Like, I, I, me- here. I immediately just, like, thought that I want to be here. I want to stay here. I don't want to go home. Yeah, but, Portland has that effect on people. Yes. <laughs> I love the Pacific Northwest. It's so incredibly beautiful. Like, and the people there. Not to mention the women that come from there. I know. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not that arrogant. I'm just really pale, mostly. Yeah. And I don't know. Every time we go to Portland, I just I, I like it. I know there's probably I mean there's a lot of bad stuff about Portland. I guess not housing really costs. the bad stuff that we have. Like yeah, housing costs. Three hundred percent. Yeah, snooty people. Yeah, you extremism have, on the left. Like yeah, right? we have a lot of ghetto in Albuquerque, but but in Portland you have a lot of the other right. the other way, and it's yeah. always you know yeah it's always a challenge. Yep. Um, so Portland is great. The Pacific Northwest is great. One day. Maybe I would like to retire there, live there, I'd something. I'd like to retire there. But I, I do appreciate New Mexico, too. Like, New Mexico... You know what's funny? Sometimes I'll Google stuff about New Mexico just to see what other people think about New Mexico. Mm-hmm. Like, to see if we're on some sort of list, like an underrated city. Like, sometimes I'll Google, like, the most underrated cities. Actually, we got on a list for... Um, it was a magazine. I can't remember what it was, but I read it the other day mm-hmm. online, and it was one of the most livable cities. Hmm. Right now. Just don't let your car warm up in the morning and yeah. leave it unattended. Yeah. No, seriously. <laughs> cars no, really get, don't do that, yeah. <laughs> cars get stolen every morning uh, in the winter. They call that the Albuquerque welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, your car got stolen. Welcome, Welcome to Mexico. To Albuquerque. <laughs> Welcome to Albuquerque. You're a burqueño now, eh? Um, yeah. Unless you're Joey, our friend Joey, who gets his car stolen and gets it returned in better condition. Yeah, no, he, he, got, he got it returned with like a base woofer <laughs> and like some rims. <laughs> yeah. And the cops were like, well, I mean, we can't really take it out of there. So your you're yeah. benefit, I guess. What? <laughs> How often does that happen to yeah, somebody? I know. Oh my goodness. Right. Well, we promised kids the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, I think we should probably get on that. Um, shout out to a couple things real quick. Joey, Joey Svensson, who is the... Oh wow. Well, Lindsay was off her phone for a whole 10 minutes. Uh, Joey Svensson, who is one of the hosts, co-hosts of um, the Bad Christian Podcast. And he also has a podcast with... Excuse me, which is called Pastor with No Answers. Pastor with No Answers. I slur my words sometimes. Pastor with No Answers. He responded to one of my tweets oh, he this did? week. I, did you did you like giggle a little? I did giggle, uh, but he's the one that recommended that musician to me. Um, uh-huh. Who is dang it? Who has it called? So I'm I'm trying to get into more hip hop, trying to kind of open up my my thoughts and Black my milk. minds and yeah. Uh, my mind. What am I talking about? Um, Clearly, you've opened them all. If there's more than one. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I not a whole lot of people like pop punk like me, especially not Lindsay. Like she hates pop punk <laughs> with her, all of her core. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I'm trying to open up my uh, you know musical taste. And I I do. I I don't listen to just pop punk. In fact, I listen to way less pop punk now than I did like ten years ago. Um, but I can still get with some newfound glory. Just saying. No, I but I. Vomit I, I you that. almost did today when I was playing newfound glory. Yeah. Um, Looks like mom, I'm getting car sick, and I'm like, that's because daddy's playing crappy music. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh huh. So, um, Joey Svensson from the Bad Christian Podcast, he recommended to me an album, which is called uh, Album of the Year by an artist named Black Milk, um, and I, I I'm really liking it a lot. It's hip hop. Um, but it's, it's a lot of beats, but there's a lot of it. It has a live drummer, like, and this drummer is great. It reminds me a little bit about that, a little bit of that hip hop guy. What's his name? Kick, push, kick, push. Um, Pharrell? Yeah, no, not Pharrell. Uh, it was not, it's not Pharrell. Um. Oh, Lupe Fiasco. Lupe Fiasco. Reminds me a little bit of of Lupe Fiasco. So, if you guys want to get into some hip hop, I would recommend checking out Album of the Year by Black milk um nice. i have also been getting into a little bit of chevelle hmm. from back in the day so wonder what's next was awesome um back in the day i liked chevelle but not because they were good but because they were christian right it's like weird when you're when you're a christian teenager and christian music comes out quote unquote christian music comes out you're just like all about it it doesn't matter if it's good or bad or whatever um but now that I listen to this again, now that I'm in my 30s, mid 30s, I'm like, wow, that this rocks. Like this is good. Like it's just, it's just good stuff. So, um, Chevelle, and it's and I, I don't I don't look at it as a uh, as a rip off of uh, oh who's who's the 90s uh, Tool. I don't look at it as a rip off of Tool. Everybody said it's a Tool rip off. No, it, it's it's unique. It's good. It's I, I like it. I like Wonder What's Next from Chevelle. Hmm. Um, and the guitars are just, mm, the guitars are great. Take it easy. I know. I, I just, I love that heavy guitar and just, it's just great. Uh, so that, and then I also listened to a little bit of the newest Chevelle, The North Corridor. So anyway, that's what I've got. What are you listening to? I've been listening to a band called Young Summer. Hmm. Um, kind of hipstery, if you will. Um, and then Autograph, it's A-U-T-O-G-R-A-F. Um, so yeah, pretty good stuff. If you like that kind of thing, um, nothing too different, really. I've been just kind of chilling on those for a couple days, and you know that's been fun. And then also, First Aid Kit has a new album out. Um, if you're into folky stuff, which so, I am from time to time, um, I was listening to their new album too. So, yeah. Folky stuff. So First Aid Kit, were they? Is that like the all girl band? Yeah, they're kind of like they cover some Fleet Foxes too, which is interesting. Huh. Um. But yeah, the song Classless Kids by Young Summer is a good one if you want to get a sample of what they sound like. Um, that That's your favorite track off that? Yeah, so far. 
so far. And then um, Autograph, I'm trying to remember the name of that song. And let me see if I can find it, because I... Man. Oh, Sleepless in New York City is a good one. That's what I was listening to. Okay. Um, but yeah, so. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're done here. We are done. All right. Y'all have a... Or y'all... You guys? You're cut off. Is you guys sexist, by the way? No. I feel like I've heard somewhere on Twitter that if you say you guys, it's sexist. Well, that's being hypersensitive. And but you I can also, just say dude to males and females. And I also sensitive. feel really weird saying y'all because I'm not Southern. Er, buddy. Er, er buddy. Er, buddy. <laughs> er, buddy, you guys have a good night. We'll see you later. We'll see. I almost said y'all, but we'll see you guys on the next one. All right. Bye. Oh, hang on. Can we get the music <laughs> going? <laughs> All right, now we're gone. We're Cheesecake Factory, mate.